Hey guys, welcome to Cooking with Jack 2. It's the second channel, the channel for you viewers to post your cooking videos. Today we have Liz, who's gonna be showing us a non-traditional cottage pie from the UK. Oh, I get so excited to see the international dishes. And it's so cool because you guys do it in grams. You're always upset that I never convert my stuff. And so just go for it. So if you're gonna do a cooking video, give me your grams and I'll make the conversions. All right, you guys, enjoy this video. Take it away, Liz. Hi, everyone. My name's Elizabeth, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a non-authentic cottage pie. The reason why I say non-authentic is because the cottage pie is a really popular recipe in the UK, and there's no particular way of doing it. Some people won't agree with my recipe, but this is something that I've just developed over time. This recipe is something that I'm really proud of and that's the reason why I wanted to share it today. The ingredients you will require are ground beef or a ground meat of your choice. I'm using ground beef because it's more authentic in this recipe. If you were to use lamb, it would make it a shepherd's pie. Onions, red or white, depending on which you prefer rosemary and thyme and oregano, a oxo cube if you're from the UK, beef stock, garlic, tomato ketchup or puree, corn flour to thicken up the sauce, white or red potatoes, I'm using red because I feel that they're better for the mashed potato, butter for making the mashed potato, milk, salt and pepper and olive oil. Now for the fun part, which is the cooking. At the back here, as you can see, I've got a large pot filled with salted boiling water and I've added the potatoes. Now, I'm just gonna turn on the front burner and we can begin browning the meat. I'm gonna firstly add my onions, along with the ground beef. And whether you add olive oil or not, thoroughly depends on how lean your meat is. My meat is very lean and I'm therefore adding a little bit of olive oil for flavour. Now I'm going to begin breaking up the meat with a wooden spoon. If you're ever working with ground beef or any other ground meat, I would suggest using a wooden spoon because it makes it a lot easier to break up the meat. I'm now going to season with some pepper to your taste and I like quite a bit of pepper and that's why I'm adding this much and I'm going to add some salt, this is coarse ground sea salt and any salt will be fine. We will come back when the meat has thoroughly browned. I've allowed this to brown for about 10 minutes and I've just added in the garlic and the seasonings and I'm just going to saute this for about 30 seconds. Now that this has been sautéing for about 30 seconds I'm going to add in the corn flour and I'm going to mix this in until it's thoroughly distributed into the meat and you'll be able to tell that because you won't be able to see it anymore. And the next step is to I'm just going to add in the ketchup at this point and I'm going to allow that to sauté for about a minute or so just to incorporate that ketchup into there. Now that the ketchup has been incorporated into the meat I'm going to add in the oxo cube and if you can't get these that's no problem at all just add in a little bit of beef stock but if you do have an oxo cube, this is the point where you would stir it in. And I'm just going to sauté this for a minute or so, just to incorporate that oxo cube. So now that that's been incorporated, I'm going to add in some water. And it can be boiling, obviously that will help it to come to the boil quicker, but that's completely up to you. And I'm just going to give this a quick stir. I'm going to leave this on a gentle simmer for about 20 minutes along with the potatoes. Now 
During the cooking process, feel free to add some water depending on how thick you like your gravy. The reason for cooking this so long is just so that we can tenderise the meat. Now that the cooking process is over, I'm going to turn off the meat and the potatoes and I'm going to drain off the potatoes ready to make them into mash. As you can see, I've drained the potatoes so what you want to do now is put them back onto the hob for about a minute to get rid of any excess water. So this is the way that I make my mashed potatoes. As I've said before, this is no way authentic but this is how I do it. So I'm just going to start off by mashing around the potatoes. I'm just going to bring that closer to me. And you just want to keep mashing it until there's no big lumps in there. Now I'm quite happy with how the potatoes look consistency wise. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take about a tablespoon or so of butter. Remember that all ingredient amounts will be left in the description box below. And I'm just going to start mashing that through the potato. When you've done that, what you want to do is you want to take a few tablespoons of milk and add it. But you don't want to add it all at once, just in case it makes it too sloppy. And just start mashing that through as before. And I'm going to add a bit more than that, I'll probably add the rest of mine. And I'm just distributing that milk throughout the potatoes. Now I'm just going to get everything off the masher with a spatula. Now I'm going to switch to a balloon whisk and I'm going to start mixing the potatoes. This will give it a really fluffy texture. My mashed potato is finished and all over the counter. But nevertheless, this is what we're going to use to top the pie. As you can see, I've transferred the meat mixture to a big casserole dish. And it needs to be quite deep so that we can top it with the potatoes. So that's what I'm going to do now. To do this by adding it in splodges, basically. And I'm just going to take all of that mashed potato and I'm going to put it on top of that meat mixture. Now that the topping is on top of the pie, I'm going to start scoring the mashed potato. By doing this, it will create crispy bits which give the dish a really nice texture. Now as I mentioned previously, your oven should be now preheated and you want to put the pie into the oven for approximately 25 minutes depending on how much you like it done but 25 minutes is usually a perfect amount of time for me. As you can see, I've just taken the cottage pie out of the oven and it's currently bubbling at the sides. I left it in for about 20 minutes on the top shelf but it depends really on how crispy you want it. I like mine quite soft, so I only left mine in for 20. I'm going to leave this to rest for about 5 minutes before I get stuck in. I just left this to rest and now I'm going to get stuck in. Make sure that you get a lot of that gravy on there, otherwise it might be a bit dry. So that seems like a good enough portion to me and I'm getting it everywhere. I'm just going to take a taste of the final dish. The mashed potato is cooked to perfection. It goes so well with the texture of the minced beef. The gravy is really nice and thick. If you don't like such a thick gravy, I would suggest adding a bit more water. But I really like thick gravy. 
This is really nice. I'd really recommend this recipe, especially if you have young children. It's a really popular recipe in the UK, especially for kids. And I really hope that you give it a try. I hope to see some more of your recipes in the future. And I'd just like to thank Jack for giving me the opportunity to be able to film this video. And I'll see you all next time.